Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, we're going to get going on making a menu. Now, this menu is going to be for Windows, Mac, Linux, any of that stuff, and we're going to talk a lot about what a menu is and how we can add default items in it, how we can totally customize it, and how we can get our application's menu started. So let's get going on that right now. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be talking all about the menu system. You'll be noticing a little bit something different about the framing of this video is that we're actually seeing things like file, edit, and all that stuff up top here. For the first time, I usually cut it off to the bottom. Uh, however, it's going to be important to see this stuff, especially in this video. Now, you see I toggle over to my Electron app. You'll see we have some basic menu items already available to us. If you click on Electron, you see About Journal, Services, Hide Journal, Hide Others. We also have all of this good stuff where Undo, Redo, Copy, Paste. And we're going to be talking a little bit about more about why these are here and how to get them here and stuff like that. And you can see we have the, sort of the basic Mac OS items in here. And these are the defaults. However, we don't want just the defaults. We want to be able to customize this. And to customize this, what we need to do is, well, bring in menu. So let's head up to the top of our main.js and let's bring in a new package from Electron, which is comma menu. I mean, not comma menu, but menu. And now that we have access to menu, we're going to head into our create window function, which starts on line eight for me. And I'm going to give us some space here. Okay. Now, there's various ways to create a menu. However, the most efficient and easiest way is the template method. So that's the only one I'm going to be showing you here. You can consult the docs if you want to see more. However, I just want to get going on with the most basic menu possible. And the template really offers uh, really no downsides here. So let's go ahead and just say const template is equal to an empty array. Next, I'm going to go ahead and take this empty array and create a menu out of it. So we're going to say const menu is equal to capital menu or capital M. Uh, that menu is coming in from the package dot build. Uh, I didn't mean to get rid of the menu dot build template or build from template. OK, so build from template is going to accept template like this, and it's going to create us a menu with this like this. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to say capital M for menu, and we're going to want to set our application menu. So set application menu is going to come in and we're going to pass in the menu itself. So we're creating a empty array as a template. Then we're saying, hey, the menu build from that template. And then we're saying, hey, menu set application menu, use this menu that we just created here. Now, at this point, if we head back to our Electron app, you could give this a command R, you could refresh it, you could do all that stuff, but you're not going to see anything change, especially up here in the menu. What we need to do is we need to come to our command line. We need to stop our Electron process and rerun Yarn Electron. Okay, and you can see we're back up and running, and now we simply just have Electron up top here. All of our defaults have gone away, and that's because we're passing in an empty array for our menu saying, hey, there's no menu items. And if we select this electron, literally nothing happens. So it's good and bad. We now see that we can control the menu, but unfortunately we've nuked out all of our uh, default items. So how do we get these back? Well, one of the reasons why I wanted you to keep the docs open at all times is because, well, we have access to a lot of important stuff in the docs. If we head to electronjs.org forward slash docs, we can scroll down until we see menu. Now, from the menu page, we're going to have access to something called examples, which is going to show you how to use the menu. The coolest thing that they did for their example is they use the default menu as the template. So what I want you to do is select all of this stuff, everything that includes up until the const menu. So I want you to select from const template to uh, just before const menu. We're going to head back into our application, and instead of the empty template in here, we're going to replace that with all of our good new stuff. Let's talk a little bit about what comes along here. We simply are defining the same thing we had before where we had an array, only this time we have an object where we have something called a label. The label is literally what's going to show up top here in our edit. 
And the submenu again is going to have various items. You can see we have edit, view, window, and help. In addition to that, if you scroll down, you'll also be able to see we have our if platform process equals Darwin. Now this is basically saying if Mac OS, okay? If this is a Mac, then what we're gonna want to do is add this very first and foremost one, which is going to get our app name. And then it's going to have things like about, a separator, services, hide, hide others. Uh, I'm gonna go over what this role and type are doing here in a minute. Don't worry about that. And next we're going to say on the edit menu, we want to add an additional separator as well as some speech, uh, start speaking, stop speaking. And then on the window menu, we wanna to, want to give some additional options. These are just sort of Mac default things. That's why they're being added separately. Now, if we come here, we restart and start our app again with Yarn Electron. You should be able to see our default menu items are back in business. We have Electron, we have Edit, we have Reload, Window, and Help. So this is great. Let's go ahead and add one of our own now because, well, it should be easy enough to add our own. Now, you might be thinking, how do I do that? If we scroll all the way up to the top where we have our template definition, we're going to want to go ahead and create a new object. Now, the order in which these are in the array is the order in which they show up. So we want this to be the very first one uh, next to edit, really. Now, just like VS Code has file right here is the first one, we're also going to have a label of file. Okay. Next, we're going to have a comma and we're going to have a sub menu. Now the sub menu is also going to be an array and it will contain the same exact kind of stuff that our, our uh, template object contains. Essentially it's going to contain an object with something like a label. Now what kind of things might you have in a, a file menu? You can see inside of VS Code there's open file or new file, new window, open, open recent. I'm gonna go ahead and have this be open directory or open dir, D-I-R. We just say open dir. What do they say, folder? I guess they use folder. Let's say open folder. That makes more sense, I guess. Now open folder, uh, this application is gonna take a folder and it's gonna be able to load up all of the posts. In addition, we're also gonna wanna have, let's uh, duplicate this line and have another one, which is going to be open file. Okay. In the next few videos, we are going to talk a little bit about how to add not only shortcuts to, but events to these things. But that's really it. We now have file as a label, submenu as an array, and then two labels, open file, open folder. Let's go ahead and start or, or stop and then restart our electron and head back to our application where we, well, when it loads up, we should be able to see that we now have a file menu here. This is brilliant because all we simply did was add a label. Inside of file, we now see we have open file and folder, of which if you try to select, they're not going to do anything. We haven't rigged them up to any sort of logic, right? By default, the stuff just doesn't do stuff. Uh, however, there are some exceptions. Now, you also see we have a separator and speech in here. So what's up with that? Well, if we scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, and the Darwin stuff, if we scroll down all the way to edit menu, you'll see that it's simply adding a separator and the label of speech on the second item in this array. Well, since edit is now the third item in the array, we're gonna wanna go ahead and change this, I'm sorry, not to two, or not to three, but to two, to make this target the second menu, the edit menu. And just like that, the window menu is now the fifth, which needs to be set as the fourth array uh, index, okay? So that's going to fix that little issue where the speech stuff was showing up in the file menu rather than the edit menu. Now, in addition to that, you may be noticing some weird, weird stuff here. In fact, this role is a, a submenu item, right? Or let's even scroll up to edit, right? This might make more sense up top here. We have a label edit, sure. We have a submenu and we have an object. Now in our example, we need to have these be a label. So what's up with role and what's up with type? We can see that the type separator is most likely just putting in these lines here to separate the menu. But what about role? Where does role come from and how does it fit into this? I mean, if we head to our application and look at edit, you can see that undo not only has a label, but it also has a shortcut as well as paste and match style has a shortcut. So let's check out roles. 
what we want to do is head back to the docs in Electron. And if we just do a command find for roll, you'll see a link to roll, or you'll get taken directly to uh, the API menu item pound rolls, okay? And what we see in here is a whole list of rows. Now, what a roll does is it gives you a label and an accelerator. And we haven't used the word accelerator yet, but it's essentially a keyboard shortcut. So it gives you a label and a shortcut for a uh, sort of default grouping. For instance, undo, redo, copy, paste, paste, match, style, select all. These are all of the various ones in addition to these Mac OS specific ones like hide, hide others, unhide, that sort of stuff. So if you need some defaults uh, and you don't want to implement undo, copy, and paste stuff, I mean, I don't even know if you you necessarily would want to do that ever, uh, you have access to default undo, all that sort of stuff, just by adding a role, okay? So while most of the things that we would use a role for are already in here, uh, I just don't want you to be confused when you see the word role as a submenu item rather than a label. Okay, so this is really excellent. Uh, we've now learned quite a bit in this video. We've created a template. We've created our own menu items. Uh, we've shown you how to create a root menu item as well as a sub menu item. And we have labels for those. Now, one thing we haven't done yet is we haven't done any sort of events, right? Obviously, when you click any of these open file, open folder, nothing happens. Well, in the next video, I'm going to take that opportunity to show you how we can have an event on one of these. But this event is actually going to be a little bit different. We're not gonna quite open files or folders just yet. What we're gonna be doing is, well, something that is very, very exciting for web developers. We're gonna be toggling Chrome developer tools because remember, I said this is all based on Chromium. We have access to the Chrome developer tools. So how cool is that? So what I'm gonna be doing in the next video is we're gonna be creating a new menu, which is for developers, and we're going to have an item in here in which you're toggling the dev tools on and off. So fire up that next video as we learn a little bit about events from menu items, as well as developer tools in Electron.